Hi guys, um, uh, thank you for joining this Lightning Talk. My name is Roberto. Um, I'm the tech lead of the uh, developer advocacy team at ARM. Our main mission is to support developers and showcase how to make the most of any ARM new technology. And as part of this work, I would like to uh, show you today how we can write our better and most robust games, right, code for gaming. And this is a topic that hasn't been discussed previously at GDC. So what you will see today hasn't been shown, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in any other place, right? So um, what, I, what I'm planning to talk about is just um, the memory tagging extension, why ARM and, and Google develop uh, the memory tagging extension, the, um, the main principle, the working principle, and I will showcase a live demo on how you can debug application on uh, uh, Android Studio using an, uh, a phone uh, that supports uh, memory tagging extension to detect memory bugs, right? So according to Google, the memory bugs are the top contributor to Android security vulnerabilities. As you can see, I mean, the memory bugs are responsible for high lifetime, uh, uh, high lifetime cost because the more memory bugs, you need to spend more time trying to find it and fixing, right? Uh, also, they are responsible for poor user experience. If, if you are running an app and, and suddenly start behaving uh, strange because of, there is a memory bug, it is not a good, experience, good uh, game user experience. And finally, it is a problem from the security point of view because any memory bug can be used by a hacker as a back door, right, to uh, enter our system and do whatever they want, right, with it. So this is why ARM and Google decide to implement this memory targeting extension um, tool to uh, detect memory bugs. And the working principle is very easy. So it is based on a lock and key model. So the memory are tagged with a meta tag uh, and it implements the, uh, the lock uh, of, of the pair, right? And the and the um, uh, there is also a meta tag attached to the every um, virtual uh, memory, which is the pointer. So at runtime, every time that is happening a load and a store, the CPU checks that both metadata are matched, right? And if it, if they don't match, then the application will crash. So if the application crashes, if the application crashes. Nobody can use the application as a backdoor for you know uh, entering our system, right? Even if it is, if, if it is, there is a memory bug, right? And now I will showcase how we can use uh, uh, the memory tagging extension to debug applications of Android Studio. This is a live demo and detect exactly where in the code is happening in the memory bug. But for this, we need a, a, a device. Uh, that support memory, uh, the memory tagging extension, MTE. And this, and I have this device here. This is a Google Pixel 8 or Google Pixel 8 Pro. This is the first device that support memory tagging extension out of the box. So let me just go here. And also, Let's move. So, how you, how you can enable the, mem the, mem the memory tagging extension in the Google Pixel 8 or Google Pixel 8 Pro? You just need to settings, and settings, and then we go to system, and there we. We go to developer options. We, we need first to enable developer options, right? But you know how to do it, right? And then there is a memory tagging extension option. So the first time you enable it, you will see that it is disabled, right? You need to enable, and then the system will ask you to restart the phone. That's all. This is all you need. I have already enabled it, right? So I will show you with the phone, uh, with the memory tagging extension, how we can debug an application in the um, um, Android Studio and see what happened. So I have an application. Let me just move a little here. So as you can see, we have here the Google Pixel 8 Pro, right, connected. And I will start debugging the application. 
this is an application that I implemented, uh, an, an application that I developed that implements several memory, typical memory bugs, right? You will see now, it is just building. Uh, let me just... Uh, it's just building, right? It needs some time to... Okay, it's here, right? This is the application. It just each button implement a function that call a memory bar, right? For example, use after free. Uh, there is a, uh, you allocate some memory and then you uh, free the memory and then you try to use the pointer again, right? So this is basically use after free, right? So let's see what happened if I press that button. But well, first I want to show you that here in the Android manifest, you need to have uh, the memory tag, uh, this, oh. Uh, where is it? Uh, this line of code here. So that is saying that the memory tagging extension is enabled and we are using the sync mode. There are three modes, sync mode, async, and some hybrid mode between two, right? Let me just uh, now go back to the phone and I will just press this button. And let's see what happened. Automatically, automatically, it, it gets you right to the line of code, which is exactly before where the memory bug happens, right? So we allocated the memory, right? And then we deleted that memory and we try, we are now trying to access that memory that has been previously. So this is a very simple use, use case, right? But you developers know that how difficult it is to, is to find a, a memory bug, because most of the time they, are, they just happen randomly. You can't just reproduce as a standard error, and then you need to spend a lot of time and effort trying to fix them, right? So uh, and this is an easy way, right, to uh, uh, at least be sure that your application is free of, of bugs, right, of memory bugs. Um, <clears throat> So let's see what happens if, um, if I disable the memory tagging extension in the phone, right? It will take me just uh, a minute because I will need to restart, right, the phone. Okay. Oh, I need to stop the debugging. Stop the debugging first. Stop. Stop. Okay, and then I, I will disable and I will restart the phone. So it's restarting, it will take, it will take like a minute. But let's see what happens when, when we disable the memory tagging extension. Okay, it's, it's starting already. And let's do the same. We start the debugging process again. Is there, right? We got, but well now the memory memory tagging extension is disabled on the phone. It's not working, right? So, and we will just press. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. So the application doesn't crash. So we just can detect where the memory bugs happen, right? And in this case, the, the application is just susceptible to be used by a hacker as a backdoor, this memory back just to enter our system and, and perform any, any, anything they want, right? 
most of the time not good, right? So let me just go back to the, the slide deck. Uh, so and there are two big conclusions that I would like to share. First, it is that MTE protects our phone, right? Because every time there is a memory bug, the application crashes, and it can just uh, be further used by any anyone to enter the system, right? And the second is that we highly recommend the, the use of the memory tag extension with the phone enabled to test our software during software development in our continuous integration system, the, our CI system, right? So if we do that, and it's really, it's just another another phone to test, right? Uh, connected to our uh, uh, CI. Uh, the only thing is that you will need at this time just to use a Google Pixel 8 or Google Pixel 8 Pro because they are the only devices, right? But, but we hope that in the near future, more devices become available. Um, and so finally, uh, I'm sharing this um, um, links where you can have more info about the memory tagging extension. Uh, there is a video that I prepared which is more detailed on how, how to use it, how to enable in the um, uh, Google Pixel 8 and also a learning path which is step by step uh, showcase how to debug application in the Android Studio. So thank you, thank you very much. If there is any question, I'm happy to answer. Yeah. Does this help you like trace back memory issue? Sorry? Does this help you when you're tracing backwards? When yeah, so this is, very, I mean, this is a very good question. I mean, we haven't, this is something that you can see in the learning path because when the application crashes, it generates a bug report. A bug report that then you can access and then it traces back everything right from the moment that the, the, the all, all the steps, right? From the moment that the application started to the moment that the application crashes and you can, you can follow all the, uh, all the the the, 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 yeah, the the backtrack right of the yeah but but the point is that if you if you debug your application in in the Android studio it's the easiest it's a way you just it would just point you to the line of code right otherwise you, you need to uh, unwind right all the memory all the memory stack right but 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 the report will show you that yeah it's a very good question thank you thank you for that thank you guys thank you very much